Okay, so I want to look at AI agent tools, and it's I just I want to just go back to some of the basics here. And there are a lot of good videos on YouTube that talk about all the things you can do with tools. And there's so much you can add to these things for calendars, for automations around web scraping, and so many things. But the main point I want to focus on is how before this would have taken so much work as a developer with if-else statements to build. And what we're looking at here is just, I want to say a few clicks, and it really is just a few clicks. Sure, it took me time to test it in QA and get it just right with the prompts. But we basically go back to prompting at that point. And so with AI agent tools, you get to this point where the LLM can choose what to do. Now, in this example, we are going to use this particular agent from different ways. For example, we can text this agent. We could visit the website I made to chat with the agent right here. So we could call the agent with a phone where I use a VAPI for that. And we can obviously just talk to the agent with things like Postman. So that would represent you using it as an API. And so we get to this point where you can build applications, whether it's text or APIs or chat widgets like you saw there, and then your agent can decide what to do. Unless you're a developer, it's hard to just explain. We've basically reduced a ton of code. No more of these if-else statements. You can just say, okay, here's the message I'm giving you. Go figure out what to do. And at this point, we could swap out the models and have memory, which is great. But we can also say, you know what, go look in the database for our services and appointments. I could even pass into it certain query strings or let it query the database because that is a tool. I could say, you know what, if the customer wants us to, or at the end of the call, message them with a confirmation message, or this one where it's find and book the barbershop, the appointment. And this is in and of itself an agent. So if we go into this guy, it's an agent using another AI agent. And we have these funny names for things. And an agent is just this LLM that has tools and then is asked to do something. It's asked or it's triggered by a schedule. But at this point, this guy's, hey, what is this person asking? Which tool should I use? Should I create an appointment or should I search for possible appointments and then maybe ask them an, a question? So at this point, the agent, that guy needs to, okay, thanks for asking me. I'm going to go do what I need to do to figure out what can help in this situation. So in this case, the person has a service request, they're searching. And then the response is, hey, I'm going to go search for that particular service and see what we have available for times. So it took a moment to query the database based off of that particular query and request. So again, we see that this agent can be used in all those ways. Now, in this one here, I could say, and it will go through the process of talking to our agent and seeing what's up. So what just happened there was we sent in this request and we got a message here and then it goes through the pipeline to say, okay, this is what they're asking. This is the prompt that knows how to deal with all these different, not each question, but the type of services, the type of interactions your customer is going to have with the service. So we don't have to figure out everything. We just want a prompt that can help guide it through the options that are going on here. And so it comes out to say, hey, I need more information, which is legit. And that's what we want. We want this LN to be smart enough to say that it, it may have another question for us. So if we go back to that, we're going to just ask for a haircut. Now, look, at that would be a moment where I need to do a better prompting because I don't want to ask the name of the person. I just wanted to figure it out for me. I'll type in Mike because it's there. But it should have said, hey, do you want Mike or Matt or whoever is on the list? It shouldn't have been that. But that's... Where, again, it comes back not to a bunch of code, but to prompting, and is that right? In this case, it will go back to the AI with this next question, and that next question will lead to possibly a done action or a scheduled event or a new question. So in this case, it said, okay, your awesome makeup appointment is confirmed, and then it does the appointment for us. But what I really want to show is that when you're looking at building an API, when you're looking at building a flow in your application, 
you don't have to consider every single flow. You can give it to the agent and let it have the tools to manage the next step. Now, over here, I have this. So when it is being called, it will then use the better tool, the faster tool. So if I was to go to that B, and let's go to the assistant and let's just test it. Okay. Thanks for calling Bob's Barter Shop. Do you have any appointments for Friday at 2 p.m.? What service would you like to schedule for Friday at 2 p.m.? Just a haircut. I will check the available times for you. Unfortunately, it seems I made an error with the date. Let me correct that and check the available times for Friday, June 20th, 2025. All right, so it goes through the process, but what I want to show you here is this. If we look here at these results, you'll see that I pushed it to this webhook. So this is a good example. Sure, I could have put it up here and I could have had that agency. This is a phone call. This is the question they're asking because in the end, it's just text, right? We just get to a point where that's what the user is asking. And then we could have let this agent decide what to do, just like we could here. And that's fine. I just wanted speed because we're on a phone call. So I wanted to make sure that the pipeline to getting the answer was as quick as possible. And honestly, I probably could have done a query because I think the API in VAPI or the LLM would have made it sound nice. I just had to deliver the results. But then this one here would have finalized the appointment when it's done. So there are those moments too where you can then say, you know what, I don't want to have five or a hundred tools here. I just want one API for that particular request. And I want the results to come back as quick as possible. So it just shows a flexibility there of using the agent for multiple tools or using the agent for the one tool to get the one job done that might need to be a little bit more flexible. In this case, it not only has to find the appointments and query them for the particular day because this tool assumes you're going to do a day query or service or other things to query in the database, but the service might actually lead to more questions. So here's a list of particular times that are available, but it could have asked for more questions. Like this one here, if it tries to make an appointment and you don't say what type of appointment, it would ask for more information. And looking at tools, use those when you find yourself. I remember working with a developer recently who really was caught up in the idea of chat bots from five, six, ten years ago, whatever the number is. And we had to figure out every single question the person could ask and then connect those to every single possible outcome. What we're saying here is you no longer have to do that. Give the interaction to the agent, let the agent choose which tool to use to answer that particular user use case. And you find yourself just not having to do a bunch of code, a bunch of if else statements and so forth. Okay, I hope that helps with tools. It is one of the best patterns we have right now from these AI, from all this AI stuff. When you're using NADN and you find yourself building lots of things without AI, it's in these moments that you realize how quickly you can add AI to anything and help it to just do more with that endpoint. I'm going to do, I've done it in the past. I'll do it again because I really want to do it anyways. But I have one that's all about meal planning, food planning for the week and shopping list. And it will show you how it can come into this and deal with all the requests coming from the user and come out the other end with the right thing. And I did another video before on what do you want to watch together? And again, that AI agent says, you know what? This is what they're asking. I'm going to go do this and then turn, and I'm going to use the right tool for that and come out the other side with a finished result. So again, just over and over again, it becomes the secret sauce in any of these backend systems for building. So reach for it, learn about it, try it. It can seem tedious at first. It can sometimes be overused but find that balance, but definitely start moving away from a lot of those if-else statements and definitely don't be writing code when you can do this. All right, thank you.